you trying? Why are you trying to fuck with the F three now? I thought you. What's the F three? What is that? I want. Like, yeah, I want. Yeah, I'll drink. This is my favorite flavor, but they got different flavors. All right. You don't be drinking my. I drink it all day. I got a refrigerator in here. I fucking order them for you. I'll make everybody drink it. What are you talking about? All right, but I never see I never seen you I never see you drinking it. Today I'm not in a mood. I got my nose broken yesterday. Who who broke Gabriel. your nose? Hey, 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 every time he get hit somewhere, oh, I broke my rib. I broke my, I broke my arm. I, did break I broke my, my nose. Yeah, Mosley man, you, did break man, my nose. Listen, you sitting with two of the toughest <laughs> fighters that ever stepped foot in the goddamn cage. We know, know what a tough. broken nose looks like. Tough. I know we tough. We know what a broken nose looks like. I know we like. tough. Your know. nose ain't broken. I know we two tough guys. I get it. What you mad about? <laughs> it's pretty straight. Yeah. It's pretty straight. <laughs> Does it look broken? No, I think you're going to be okay. Gabriel Silva. Yeah. Anderson Silverson. He's sparring with me, and he's like, yo, let me just touch you a little bit. Don't get crazy. And he hit me. I go, yo, don't hit me like that. He go, I barely hit you. So I throw overhand right. Ha! <sighs> Miss him. But oh. then he saw it. He heard it. He heard it, and he goes, oh, we're going to play that game. Watch this. Ding, 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 ding. Bing, bing, bing. Ba, ba, ba. Next thing I know, I got blood. What's wrong? Headphones? I got yeah, blood that's, that's flying out of my works. nose. <laughs> it sucks, dude. Now my nose is broken. I couldn't even breathe this morning. I got a Q-tip stuck in here because I fell asleep on the massage chair. Because I cracked my rib. Your nose ain't broken. <laughs> Easy for you nope. to say, brother. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't grow up fighting in King of the Cage and winning belts. Yo, yo, your nose ain't broken. If your <laughs> nose is broken, it'd be kind of crooked. My nose, my nose is crooked. Yours is a little, little crooked. Uh, Let me see your nose. My, mine is actually... No. Yeah, so you can tell. Mine was crooked this way, and then it was crooked that way, but now it's kind of... I kind of finished <laughs> with it straight, so I'm hoping... You, 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 yeah, you look you like a model. Out. What's that? You evened it out? Yeah. You, you re... re Rebroke it. Well, what I do when I break it, I just it sounds kind of gross. But what I'll do is I'll go, I jam my finger all the way up each nostril. Like as soon as it breaks, I just right after the fight, I'll jam it up there, and that that straightens it out. Oh, before the swelling sets in. Wow, nah, I, that, I, that is good. <laughs> that, that, sound, that sounds painful. Yeah, hey, it's better than having them rebreak it. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah, it, once they heal up, then they rebreak it. Yeah, just get it done. You know. We just saw Cheeto Vera at the coffee shop. Told me he's gonna come on the show next week. I told him, "Yo, dude, I have a broken nose. Not in the mood." And it's because he's coming over to say hi. Leave me alone, please. I got broken nose. And uh, he was so nice. He was so nice and gracious. He's telling me about his new command center. He's building a training center. And uh, my, I have a broken rib from Luke. No, because Luke body kicked me. Yeah, because everybody's bullying me now that I love sparring. This is like my first week of sparring, and I just started learning. But everybody likes to kick me. So before Luke went to Dubai, he. I told him, kick me as hard as you can. I called him a pussy. He said, don't, don't say that. And there was that's a bunch of girls here. <laughs> Again, that's what happens, bro. Yeah, there was a you bunch of girls here. can't do that. Here. Yeah, so I, you're a pussy. And he kicks me, and I, I, I almost cried, but I for sure, I was broken in half for like a day. Yeah, whenever you touch him, it's broken. Anything. <laughs> Listen, we got an MMA legend, an icon. One of the best guests we've ever had. One of the toughest guys to ever compete. You've heard it from Joe Rogan. You've heard it from multiple UFC analysts. This guy is literally one of the toughest to ever compete in the sport of MMA. Chris Lieben, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Man. Thank you guys. Thanks Unbelievable. For coming, man. Thanks yeah. for coming. He was Good here last you. night and then drove all the way back to San Diego, then drove all the way back for where, you. Where, where were you last night? What what part? Uh, Orange County Fairgrounds. Oh, yeah, you. So right down the street. That's, I guess that's just down the street. Man, you yeah. should have just got him a hotel. I told him whatever he wants. He, I told him, we'll rent you a car. Whatever you need, we appreciate you. He did. He did. He it's did. true. He, he did, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let me know if he ain't trying to I didn't care. realize it was so close. So yeah. I, I, I should have done my due diligence. Bro, you walking distance from the fairground. <laughs> <laughs> I told him when he said that this morning, I didn't want to be the one to say anything. You know, Vinny's smart. Vinny goes, that's only 1.1 miles away from the studio. <laughs> Vinny, shut up. <laughs> You'll get us killed. Um, but no, it's amazing to have you on here. We've been doing a lot of, uh, we say this every podcast, but we've been doing a lot of like, hey, who do you guys want on the show? And everybody loves like the, the true traditional war stories of true combat experts. And you're definitely one of them. We know I want to touch on so many things. So does Rampage. Exciting to see your gym down in San Diego, uh, you know, talk about your career. But I think off the break, I want to talk about, did you ever squash the beef with Josh from the Ultimate Fighter? I mean, kind of, you know, I don't, I, I did for sure with Bobby. Bobby's coming around. We've done a couple of reunions. Josh didn't, uh, he didn't show up to those. You know what I'm saying? But the truth is, man, I ain't got time for that shit, you know? <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I mean, it was a pretty crazy battle. Pretty yeah, crazy feud, yeah. huh? For a long time ago, that's you know that was Ultimate Fighter one. So yeah, yeah. I ain't worried about it. That's yeah. that's that's literally the first ever Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's the that's the reality show that saved the UFC. That whole show. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it definitely changed the trajectory. That's for sure. 
Wow, that's crazy how a reality show can have that effect on an MMA event. Yeah, I mean, that. I think it brought the world of, like, sport, like, combat sport to the world of sport. Like, people could actually see the fighter, see that's what's what going it was. on. All of, a sudden, all of a sudden, people were invested. They, yeah. they, they felt like they had a relationship with that athlete, so... So they wanted to tune in. They wanted to buy the pay-per-view to watch those guys fight. Yeah, because before that, people were looking at us like we was like human cockfighters. Yep, yep. Yeah. And they didn't know who was who, really. You know right. what I mean? It was just the UFC was on. If you were a casual fan, you know, you didn't you didn't know yeah. who the difference between Billy and John when they were fighting, you know. But if you knew all their beef and their backstory, yeah. you know, it makes it a lot. Why you get so excited when I said cockfighting, though? It's just funny. <laughs> the way you said it is just funny. I didn't get excited. I said it's funny. What do you you want to do this? Off I, the I, no, no, I'm just saying. I just, I, you know, he went I to explain for one week. Now he just wants to always pick fights with me. Like, bro, I'm half your size. If you want to beat me up, go ahead. But I'll give you a battle. I'm, I'm, well, just winging overhand. Bro. That's <laughs> all you gotta do. You see that new thing I learned? Ah, ah, same side kick, leg kick. TJ, I learned that. Oh so yeah, don't. he does that. Same side. You ever train with TJ? I never trained. I watched him. Watched a lot of his fights. I studied a lot of his movement. He's great. Yeah, he's good. He's good. What, one of the videos that's like super viral on YouTube is you yelling at uh, Josh like when you're leaving the the cage in the Ultimate Fighter. You're yelling <laughs> at him about like, hey, why why are you laying on the floor or something like that? What were you trying to explain him? Like, what were you trying to tell him? I I mean, he wrestle fucked me. That's all. You oh, know. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. That was, I hate that. You know. Uh, I mean, he got the he got the W. You know, and in in hindsight. Uh, you know, you can win fights that way, you know, but, uh, back then that's not the, that's not the way I, I started out as a wrestler. I mean, I was, I was a wrestler, but, uh, I didn't, I was never trying to use it when I was fighting, mm -hmm. I was trying to knock people out. Yeah. Know? I think that's why you won the fan favorites. Cause you go out there and you have a, 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 all your fights be exciting. Try to try to get it done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like you said, bro, I'm not getting paid by the minute, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's exactly, go, yeah. let's go. Yeah. It's true, though. I feel like, same with you, like, fans like to see a show, and you gave everybody a show. You've talked about, like, or not talked about, but this whole concept of, like, submitting and tapping and going to sleep and refusing and not refusing. Can you kind of break that down if it's ever been, like, a set rule in your camp? Like, you'd rather just, like, go to sleep than tap? Me, personally, I'm going to sleep. I've, I've, I've never uh, never tapped out in a fight. I've been, I've been choked unconscious, you know, I've had my arm broken, but technically I don't think that counts as a submission, right? Like it should be, it should be a TKO, <laughs> but they need to make a different class for that, you know? But, uh, I mean, listen, guys are going to do what they're, what they're going to do. If, if one of my athletes gets caught in a choke and, and they, and they feel they want to tap, I mean, that's fine. I'm not going to, uh. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna hate him for it, but I am gonna remind them I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> I man, I don't know. I tap out. I tap out. Really? I, yeah, I do because because um, when I was fighting in pride, I just didn't trust the refs. I didn't trust them. I, I just didn't trust them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just I tap out. If, some, if I'm trying to get out and I'm about to go to sleep, I said, "Fuck this! I'm not gonna let nobody put me to sleep." He might let you sleep for a while. Yeah, that. you never know. And, and the refs could let them punch me more while I'm out and stuff like that. I just, yeah. don't, I just don't trust. I just don't trust. That's a different mindset. That's just like, um, you know, a couple of fighters have like, like a uh, incident annoyed. He, he said, "This he, is actually Ensign shirt right here." Wow. Wearing, yeah. yeah. Well, you were training with him, huh? Yeah, I've trained. I've trained. I've done done quite a bit with Ensign. Uh, my jujitsu coach Barry Yoshida trained under Ensign as well, so. You think that's where so, you get yeah, that mindset? Yeah, he's kind of part of the family. Mm -hmm. That's where you get that mindset. Fuck it, I ain't tapping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, this was before my UFC career was really before I got to know Ensign well. Oh, okay. But, uh, but yeah, very similar mindset for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy mm -hmm. mindset. That's like that's like Ensign was nuts. If you listen to his stories, bro. <laughs> bro, I've seen some of his fights where it's like. Um, when he fought Ego Volchanchin and stuff and like that. He was fighting to the death. To the death. Yeah. Like he, yeah, you had to kill him. He won't give up. <laughs> that's that's a good mindset to have. Yeah. But, but for me, I'm like, if I, you know, I've been tapped out twice and it's both the same damn submission, a rear naked choke. And I was that's like, crazy. I ain't going to sleep. Fuck that. Hey, you're going to wake back up. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't, don't, don't trust worry. people. Yeah. Really? No, I don't. But I mean, <laughs> like, and I've never been put to sleep. I'm sure I would Come if on. I ever fought. No, don't. Don't put me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to put me to sleep? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for war. But uh, I was ready. But uh, one thing I can imagine is like when you wake up, you got to for sure be telling yourself like that's never going to happen again, right? Like it seems like when Tank was on the podcast, Tank was like, yeah, these moves came out of nowhere and uh, he put me in a choke, but that was never going to happen again. When you wake up, you're like, Wait, am, I, am I in heaven? Like, <laughs> where the fuck am I? What's going on? I've had a, I've had a couple. I think... Uh, 
probably the worst when when Anderson knocked me out. Um, I thought it was thirty minutes after the fight for like the next three days. That's great. but then I can remember getting choked out too, and and because in the UFC, you know, that it's all the lights are right on top of the cage, so all you hear, you just hear these echoes, and you just see these white lights. You know, and then you're like, wait, what? Yeah. If, if, if I happen, they're like, it's over. Don't get up. It's over. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? We didn't fight yet. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's that was a, a crazy battle. That was, <laughs> Ander, that was Anderson Silva's debut. Yeah. Was yeah, that yeah, at yeah. the Hard Rock Hotel? Yeah. 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 And, and they're both being southpaws. I remember that fight because I had just uh, done a deal with Anderson for uh, SC Village Paintball Park. For my paintball okay. park, we were sponsoring okay. him. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember everybody talking about, oh, my God, this guy... Chris Lieben is going to kill him. Like Anderson's too, like tries to be too slick or whatever it may be. I don't remember like the the theory on that, but his style. Yeah, I don't, I don't, the theory on yeah, that. I don't, I don't remember why people would. Theory like, was wrong, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the theory. But but his style seemed very crazy as a crazy matchup for you because you were both south and you had a, a a crazy, you know. I mean that that whole fight, that whole situation there, that being his debut, they were really gassing him up. So yeah. I feel like, did you think that this guy was going to be the GOAT? Did you think he was going to be? I mean, we I knew he was good. As a matter of fact, that's the only fight I ever tried to turn down from, from the UFC. <laughs> yeah, my coach, uh, my, I was training with Matt Hume at the time up, up in Seattle, and he was uh, judging for pride. He's like the head judge for pride. And so he had seen, you know, he seen all Anderson's fights and, and, and done his due diligence on him. And uh, uh, he's like, yeah, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one he ever told me not to. Probably shouldn't take, but uh, at the time, Joseph was like, "Yeah, you're taking the fight," and I was like, "All right, fuck it, let's go." You know, so um, we came up with a game plan. Uh, fight started. I threw the game plan out the window. You said, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> went went straight at him, and uh, you know, you do can't you, you can't come straight at Anderson Silva. Do Turns you remember out, your game plan? Do you remember what it was? Yeah, yeah, it involved circling. You know. <laughs> Making him, making him come at me a little bit, but uh, I've never been good at backing up. So, yeah. How, how is it fighting another softball when you're a softball? I hate it. I hate, I hate it. it. I hate it too. Even even in the gym, a lot of times sparring, if if, if somebody goes southpaw, I'll just I'll switch conventional, just because like I'm so used to the combo. It's funny because I'll teach I'll teach you know uh, conventional all all day. But when I'm actually sparring, especially if they're good, I like that mixed lead. That's what that's where I'm used to. I'm used to, mm. so. You know, I think we, we definitely have an unfair advantage as a Southpaw, and that's why you see it. I mean, as, you know, when I do these uh, these amateur shows and then the lower level pro shows, you know, one one guy out of 20 fights will be a Southpaw. You know, by the time you get to the UFC, it's like every third guy is, is a Southpaw. So there's most certainly an advantage there. Mm, yeah, yeah. I hate sparring and fighting Southpaws. Why is that? It's just it's just different, just a totally different look. Like uh, Luke uh, Luke Wood, I mean Luke Rockhold, he's a, he's a southpaw, and we was fine. He was kicking the shit out of me. Like, Everything is different. Everything, Everything is different. Everything is different. Yeah. But is it something that is it different? Because I'm not speaking from a place of experience. I'm asking: Is it different because the strategy that you normally train with, or is it different because the way the punches are coming at you? All your what makes combos, it the direction you circle. The entire game is is backwards, Got you it. know, and, and I'm used to fighting mixed lead, so I'm used to that game, you know. Now I'm not saying one is better than the other. I suppose if you were, you know, used to it, if all you ever sparred, if I was southpaw, I only sparred southpaw, same as a mm. right hander fighting a right hander, you know. But uh, um, yeah, I like that advantage. I like that mix that mixed lead for sure. I can't even get my jab off on most uh, southpaws. It's hard for me to get jab, my jab. Jab is a little. It's not. It's worthless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It gets a southpaw to be honest. You know, it's, it's just not as valuable of a tool. Yeah, that's crazy. Even Mosley was showing you in the ring the other day, Sugar Shane Mosley. Yeah. About when you're sparring and kind of like pawing the the jab down a little bit. Yeah, I I do that when I when I fight a um, southpaw. They call it sword fighting. Remember mm -hmm. we went over that. Mm -hmm. And and but he was teaching us to to do it even if they're right-handed. I was just used to doing it when I go That's southpaw. funny. That's what I tell people all the time. I said, really? yeah, it's almost like you're fencing. You yeah. Know, right? It's all yeah. just, it's all it's, bullshit right wow, up here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just looking for this. I'm trying to line this up, playing the game over here. Can I get over? Can I get under? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And you. And you That's why southpaws always have that lazier jab, that arm's out farther. You know, you see conventionally, you got to keep it tight, but southpaws always out a little farther. And you, and you try to keep them from stepping on the outside of your foot? Me, I mean, most of the time, yeah. No, there's, you know, just like anything, there's always exceptions to the rule. Yeah. Sometimes I'll cut right, cut right, then dart left. You know what I mean? So, but why are you southpaw? Are you left-handed or are you wrestled in that in that stance? Uh, both, 
both. I'm a true southpaw. Okay. I, I don't do nothing with my right hand. So mm. I but, swing a bat left-handed, I write left-handed, I throw left-handed, I skateboard goofy foot, you know. My mom told me I was born left-handed, but my dad changed me. So but I can't do I can't I can't even switch southpaw or nothing. Okay. I got three, I got three left-handed kids. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Three of my Maybe kids. Maybe you were then, yeah. 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 And two of my brothers yeah. left-handed. But did I, you do anything with your left hand? Jack off. <laughs> well, that's every, every kid, every kid I get in the gym tells me like, like I go, all right, well, what are you, are you left-handed or right-handed? Every single person I get is fucking ambidextrous nowadays. Yeah. They want, good. they want to, they want to stand both ways. I'm like, just, let's just fucking, let's just suck it one for now. <laughs> Okay, then we can worry about sucking it too later. All right. I I, saw, I see you, a lot of people at Antonio McKee's gym doing it. They they fight both ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I think as you know, don't get me wrong. As you as, first, you got to know the rules before you can start to break them. You know, at least you know as a coach, that's my standpoint. But uh, yeah, nowadays you got to be able to, to to switch it up a little more. Are yeah. you still sparring with your students and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I stay I stay pretty active. You know. Yeah. What, one thing about staying active, I'm trying to. I was trying to pull up the fight history, not as a fighter, but as a judge and, and a ref, because a lot of people don't understand that. Not only are you one of the most legendary MMA fighters, but now you're starting this new career as a judge, as a as a ref. Yeah. We saw the Herb Dean video. Can you kind of break down a little bit to me how you even made this transition, or why you even are doing this? Oh well, I. St I, st I mean, I, it's actually been quite a while. You know, I was amateur uh, here in California for like five or six years before I ever went pro maybe two years ago um, for CSAC for California. As a judge or as a ref? Uh, both. Both. I, it's both. In California, I judge and ref. And then also um, recently, I don't know, six, nine months ago, I, I started uh, started judging for, for Nevada as well. So in Nevada, only only judging. Mm. But, but here, judging judging and refereeing. And only for UFC fights? No, I do. We do everything. You know, we just had a king of the cage in San Diego. I had I had boxing last night, you know, so... So up next was one I had on Saturday. Yeah. So how do you become a, a judge in boxing? You got to study box. You got to study all the the rules and all the stuff in boxing to become. Yeah. A, you had to study it. You, you got to go to school for it, or is it a class? Yeah. Well, I did. I mean, initially, I did uh, Herb Dean's course. You uh -huh. know, which which is you know for MMA is the only way to go. Mm. Really. Yeah, yeah, you got you, used used to be Herb Dean or Big John, but I don't even know how much Big John's doing his course anymore. So I think Herb Dean might kind of be the. The only way in, at least in California, you got to pass. You got to pass that course. And and uh, how long is that course? It's it's not too long, but it's quite difficult. You know, I thought I would. I thought it'd be really easy. You know, because I've been fighting my whole life. But uh, you know, um, I was really surprised. I think out of my group, I might have been the only one to pass. <laughs> Her being like, got a monopoly out wow. of like 15, 18 people. Yeah, I think I was the only one to pass. Wow, I'm pretty sure. Um, what makes it so difficult? Well, you know, besides, you know, you, you obviously you gotta you gotta know it on paper. You gotta know you gotta know all the rules, right? You gotta know all the violations, right? You also have to understand jujitsu. You know, you gotta you gotta know. Hey, if this guy doesn't want to let this heel hook go, which way am I going to apply pressure on this guy to to stop to to alleviate it so I can so I can save this guy from any more damage? Oh wow! You know, so I mean, there's you know, it's. It doesn't seem like it to me now because I've been doing it my whole life. But there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff you got to know, you know. Yeah. I mean, when you're when you're the referee, you're kind of the uh, the sole arbiter. You know, you're the you're kind of in charge of that show. You gotta you gotta work with the doctor. You know, you gotta make sure your judges are there. You're going back and forth with the timekeeper. You know, you're trying to make sure that the you know that the rules are followed. At the same time, you know, my mentality as a a, a referee is. You know, I don't want to be, you know, I don't think a, a good referee should really be seen or noticed until they need mm. to be, until, until they need to be. So, you know, I don't, I don't try to do anything special to draw attention to myself. I just making sure I'm watching the action. I'm making sure that there's, you know, there's no low blows. There's no eye pokes. Nobody's trying to grab the cage, you know, which, you know, sometimes can be, uh, mm. be difficult because, you know, I think a lot of people watch they watch fights, you know, and they watch it from the, from the, they watch the replay from the best angle in slow motion. They go, well, obviously, but man, when punches are flying and one of those punches, there's an eye poke in the middle of that combo. It can be hard to, you know what I mean? Did this, was that a knuckle or was that a finger? You know, it can be so, so it's, it's pretty, uh, yeah, it can be, it can be tough. And some people, the last thing I'll say is some people, I think they just can't handle the stress. 
of being in be, being in there with two dudes fighting. They get kind of spazzy and stuff. Um, you know, and I think maybe, maybe, maybe having fought helps me a little bit with that, but, yeah. but, uh, I know a lot of great referees that, that have never, never fought. So it's just a, definitely a personality type. So if you see a fighter make a mistake and I poke someone, but the other fighter don't complain about it, you're just going to, you just want to let it keep going, let the fight keep going, or will you stop it and be like, well, so, so here's the question. Let's say the other fighter is winning. Let's, let's, let's say, let's say I'm beating you. Right. And then you kick me in the balls, but, I, but I don't show anything. Right. Because you're tired. Right. If I give if 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 the referee steps in and gives me time out, he's the one recovering. His lungs are recovering, you know. So so unless they unless unless I can see that they that they need that recovery, you know, I'm I'm not gonna step in, especially especially if they're winning. Yeah. Especially if they're winning and they're they're finishing, this guy's, you know, he's losing and then and then then he commits a foul. I might let it go, you know. This happened to me so many times. Uh I'm fighting and somebody knee me or kick me in the balls and I just keep going. Keep going. Because I know yeah. they need a break sometimes. I wear a steel really? I wear a steel cup. Me too. When I Always. fight. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, that's an interesting like opinion or a view on that because you, you are right. I could imagine if I was losing, I would be like, oh, I'll just hit him and then I'll get my two minutes or my one. You could, minute. Yeah, they get five minutes, right? I never even thought about that. Right. So if the other wow. guys on your time out, you get a you get a recover wow. too. So yeah, I bro. start doing that when I spar. Bro, it's a lot of str- it's a lot of little small strategies that, that people don't really think about. Yeah, and I mean and there's other things we can do too. Like for example, you know, you don't want to stop the fight. If somebody's fighting for a takedown, the other guy's grabbing the cage, you don't, you know, if they finally do get even if if that you know, if that grab in the cage, you know, the guy finally gets to take that. I don't want to stop the fight. You know what I mean? I might just take the point on the fly, you know? So, mm-hmm. so there's a lot of different ways you can, you can handle uh, the same situation, you know, and trying to, trying to find the right one at the moment can, uh, it just, it takes experience. That's what's your stance on uh, some of the fights you think that be like early stoppages or cause you're a tough fighter and you, you thinking this guy can take, take more or something like, like that. He's like, What's your stance on this? Some some fights, some refs. You say, oh, that was you want to you want to know the truth? Here's here's the truth. You referee long. You drive a car long enough, you're gonna get in a car wreck, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I got in one this morning. You if you if you referee thousands of fights and long enough, you're gonna let one go too long, and you're gonna see what happens to that guy. Yeah, you're gonna have to live with that. Yeah, right. You're probably gonna step in and stop one early, and you're gonna see what happens to that guy. Maybe you you know. In my opinion, I want to give them every chance to. I want the right person to, to win and come out on top, but I don't want anybody to get hurt. So stoppages, the only way to look at it is your stoppages have to be perfect. Mm. They have to be. They have to be perfect. It's like it's like being a a, a surgeon. You don't get to come in and have bad days. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like you got to come in and nail it. And as a as a referee, anytime I'm refing, that's that's the way that I step into the ring. Like I'm gonna do. Everything perfect, everything perfect, everything perfect. That's what I say before every match. I tell myself that, you know, and that's, you know, obviously the mark to strive for, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, you go back, you watch fights, just like I did when I was fighting. I, I go back and I look at fights that I refed, and I go, what worked, what didn't work, what needs improvement, you know? And just like just like you treat martial arts, you treat refereeing or judging you know and you go how can how can i improve how can i be better am i too close to the action am i, am I too far away was my, was i too aggressive with my stoppage you know was it early was it late was you know and and that's that's the only way to improve my last question have have you, you i've that's seen not like, your last question we got another hour i'm talking <laughs> about my last question about this oh don't i thought you were trying to skate out early you got me. i got plenty of time yeah today. don't play with me <laughs> today friday yeah don't play today's my friday. last question about ref, he, he didn't come here to talk about refing <laughs> no, but he, i'm very interested in because i think i honestly think that more fighters should get into refing because i remember when i was doing the ultimate fighter they had this one lady there that was i mean re- judging and refereeing and stuff this one lady was there with her kid she was judging the fights what yeah, she had her kid there, and her kid was running around. She was tending to the kid while the guy's fighting, and she's the judge. She one of the judges. I don't remember her name, but I don't know if she was there when you was there, but this one lady, I'm keeping it real. She brought her daughter there, and her daughter running around, and she judging the damn fight. That sounds a little, slightly a little bit crazy to me, but Bru- I mean, True story. Right. At, the, at the ultimate fight. Bring your fight. kid to work there. <laughs> true, true story. And then and then at the end of the fight, that's, that's the day when I, when I destroyed their fucking door. <laughs> And at the end, of, and, 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 and at the end of the day, they give the fight to the other guy. I was like, "Whoa! If you're going to give this fight to somebody, it should have been it should have been at least a draw, or I think my guy 
you know, did enough to win. We always do. I know, we do. I know we do. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm seeing this damn judge, right? right. So I, I was saying, uh, I was going to say, I've seen these clips on TikTok stuff, like uh, the guys get choked out or knocked out, and they don't know the fight's over, and then the ref breaking up, and they're attacking the ref. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody did that to you yet? Yeah. 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 You had to for, put them out to sleep. For sure. For sure. What that's, that's happened. What, well, you try to be nice. I mean, you got to be understanding. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you got to, you know, you got to protect yourself, you know, try, you, try to downplay it, you know, so. Usually, if some if somebody gets knocked out, you know, obviously they're they're my number one priority, right? And I'm gonna, and, I, and I'm letting them know, don't move, you're all right, no, you're good, just just breathe for a second, figure out what's going on, you know. Usually, usually a couple seconds, they figure out what happened. You know what I mean? <laughs> Most of the time, they don't get up and try to swing on you. Most of the time, I've had to sprawl a few times. <laughs> Bro, I could be a sprawl, sprawl on a guy. I couldn't be a ref. I'd be uh, like, this, you know, I, a, a retired fight or something. Like that. Uh, <laughs> you, but yeah, this is my time to shine again. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no patience for that. No, patience. hell no. This guy would. You would hit someone. Hundred yeah, percent. I don't know if I would hit some lightweights fighting. <laughs> you would hit someone. I don't know if I would yes, hit him. Especially if they just got knocked. If, maybe they just got choked out. Yeah. But if they just got knocked out, I don't want to hit them. They could probably get hurt. You'd you know? kick them or slap them or something. I, I would slam them. I would. I, I would like have my glory days back yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you ever thought about dyeing your hair red for a ref or a judge? I would I, never do that. No, too much mm, attention. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Be not, so nostalgic though yeah. to imagine him yeah. refing. Tra- with red I mean, hair I mean, UFC three hundred. <laughs> you know, dyeing your hair red is red is cool, but when you, once you're forty, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> things had to change a little bit, you know. So. Yeah, I feel you. You know, I, you well, I like to blend in, in into the background a little more now. Yeah. Chris and Bruno, during that fight, there's a big controversy that, you know, Chris obviously looked amazing, Weidman, and uh, he poked him, and there's, like, a photo. And it's all over the internet, and everybody's talking about it, but he he won the fight, and he looked dominant, and he looked good. Do you feel like that is, like, miss, like, uh, kind of, so like... I, this was last Saturday, yeah, right? Like this was last Saturday, way, yeah. yeah. I was I was working a different show, so I didn't get to watch it. I got to I gotta hear all about it, because yeah. anytime anything I don't happens, take away anything my, from my Chris, phone though. instantly <laughs> goes off. You know, what do you think about this? Um, I, I don't know. Have no input um, on on that situation. I haven't had a chance to watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people after a fight have a lot to say about everybody's performance, everything that could have happened, everything that didn't happen. But it's like whether he got poked in the eye or not, he still looked phenomenal. He still landed everything. He still accomplished a great night. Still had a good camp and came back from the injury. Like you could leave the guy alone. I feel like that as a fan. I mean, eye pokes happen. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. We we don't. We don't have boxing gloves on. Yeah. You know, we try to minimize them, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so, you know, sometimes you. Yeah, Gagey you know. just put out that post about the the gloves. There was like a tweet, something about how the UFC gloves, like kind of like it actually encourages eye pokes the way it like holds out your fingers compared to the Bellator gloves. The Bellator gloves are definitely more curved. You, you yeah. can't extend your, your fingers fully. Mm. So. so, yeah, the UFC need to adapt that. I, I thought they did change their gloves. I they, was told they, they did. Those, those gloves have gone through quite the evolution from mm. from just from when I started. Yeah, I Got remember it. they've they've changed their gloves several times, and I'm sure they'll continue to you know modify and try to try to dial them in more and more. I don't think I've ever eye poked anyone in a fight. I don't think I've ever done it in training. Have you ever been eye poked in a fight? Yeah, come on. By who? John Jones for sure. <laughs> for sure. Is that the first time you've ever disclosed that or no? No, or come do on. People I, know. Yeah, people know. I, I, I've complained about it. I just made you know, I, I didn't. I didn't make excuses of that's why I lost. But you know, that is the excuse of why I lost. Though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how were you involved with Henry Cejudo's fight in Anaheim? Were you judging it or, or were you? Uh, yeah. Well, I judged that one. You yeah. judged that fight. Yeah. Yeah. Two ninety eight. Two ninety eight. Yeah. At the Anaheim fight, we're at. I looked up the, his judge history and it had uh, like Henry Cejudo. I was like, so you don't judge the whole card? You just judge that one fight? No, I judged uh, just three or four fights on that card. Yeah, but then they swap out the judges. Yeah, why yeah. do they do that? Yeah, well, so we can so we can remain alert. I mean, you know, the UFC is a long show. <laughs> yeah, so like just explain you know that I mean? to me, just, so just, I, just so I know the the rules. So you judge the few fights and then they move out all the judges. They bring in a whole new crew. Well, especially for well for for. Uh, for bigger shows, generally they're they're rotating the judges, just like they rotate the referees. Same referee oh, wow. doesn't 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 yeah. work every, everyone right. So, so you, you know, I don't make the uh, the roster, you know, for what fights I'm on or what order it's going to go in. But uh, 
but yeah, that's 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 generally the protocol. You know Jeff Mullen? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was my first coach ever in Memphis. Oh, he's really? From, yeah, he's from Memphis. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is, yeah, yeah. 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 I'll see him tomorrow. I'll tell him I said hello. I miss yeah. him. Okay, I will. Yeah. I will. Yeah, he's a great guy, man. He's great. Yeah. He's great. He's wealth, wealth and knowledge. Too. Yeah, he's been in the game for, for forever. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. He's first guy. He's first guy to train me. I was um, helping one of my old friends train for his fight, uh -huh. and uh, three days before the the fight, the champion, his opponent pulled out, Mike Powell. Oh, Mike Powell. Yeah. Yeah. His champion, his opponent pulled out, and and Jeff Mullen like, hey, you want to fight? I'm like, yeah, who? And he told me who it is. So you like, fought Mike Powell? Three days notice. Oh, your first fight. My first fight in Memphis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember back in the day, Mike Powell was kind of, he was a man. Yeah. 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 He was a man in Memphis. He was undefeated. How'd you do? I won. Wow. By decision. Okay. Yeah. 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 I tried to throw his ass out of the ring, though, because I was tired. <laughs> man. You know, I, I, at of course you did. At that point, of course I had, you did. I had only been wrestling, been taking jujitsu for, for three days, was just learning mm -hmm. what jujitsu was. And he was fucking me up with the jab. I'm like, I, I grew yeah, up street fast. fights. Yeah, he was fast. I grew up street fighting. I knew how to fight, but but I'm gonna tell you this: from a street fighter stepping in, in, in into a ring with a with an experienced fighter, it's like apples and fucking grapes. It's yeah. a different. It's a different thing. It's yeah. a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. So as we talk about your career as a fighter, one thing being three and one in, in bare knuckle. You know, we saw a bunch of clips. We see you just destroying people. We also saw that clip that went viral with Joe Rogan talking about that cut you had. And we've just seen you being able to kind of like control the fight and the outcome of the fight, just like championship caliber level fighting. And you did it in MMA and then you did it in bare knuckle. How do you train your hands for like a bare knuckle fight? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have a different theory. My theory is they're going to break. They're probably going to break, you know, oh. just plan on it. Just plan on it. So uh, maybe if, you know, if I started off with, you know, Kung Fu or something and I had 20 years to, punch sand and everything then then you know i might do that that might work i don't know i never tr never tried it but but my my theory every fight camp has always just been you know what, i'm just gonna take care of my hands and when I, i'm gonna break them in the fight you know i just don't want to i'm not trying to do anything more to put put my hands through anymore just just training hard just hitting pads just punching with little gloves my i mean i gotta put my hands in ice water after practice already you know i try to try to take care of them as best i can and then you know, hope for the best, plan for the worst. That's yeah, crazy. That's crazy. That's why. That's why I don't want to do bare knuckle. Because yeah. you just you're going into the fight knowing that they're gonna break. I mean, that's a possibility. That yeah. That, yeah, that's that's, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. But and what normally breaks on your hand in a bare knuckle? I fight? this one I shattered this knuckle on uh, on Baroni's head. Pull it up to the camera. Uh, yeah. It's kind of you can see it's a lot quite a bit bigger on that side of that one. You know. Wow. But uh, now it's actually Crazy better. Hand. It's actually better for punching now. It's like a little marble. It's kind of happy with it, you uh, know. In the end, are you still doing bare knuckle? No, no. You just no. retired from everything. I'm retired from everything. I'm actually uh, I'm going to be refereeing the bare knuckle. It's coming here to California, so that'll be oh, exciting. Wow. Oh, wow. Exciting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. April 27th, we're finally going to get our first BKFC out here. That's going to be awesome. Where where that going? What arena? You know, Peacock Arena. Peacock Arena. I can't remember exactly where that is. Where is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's down here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's right here somewhere. Yeah. Bare Knuckle has an amazing kind of organization. It's right growing now. fast. It's growing so fast, and they have Mike Perry kind of just being the star of that right now, just yeah, kind of propelling so it. Perry and Pitbull, I think, are the main event out here. That's oh, Pitbull from Bellator. Yeah. Oh, no way. Oh wow, that's huge. Isn't that who? Uh, didn't or, AJ uh, McKee? Yeah, AJ McKee fought him twice. And then that's who he lost his belt to. Yeah, he won the belt from him, and then Tiago. then they took his belt. AJ didn't Tiago? lose that fight. Is that right? I don't know which one. I, I get them. They both named Pitbull, right? Tiago yeah. Alvarez. Yeah. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. It's two different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, these we talking about three different Pitbulls right now. Tiago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our own version. Yeah, it's of three. Pitbull. It's three Pitbulls, ain't it? Oh yeah. The two yeah. of them brothers. They both Pitbulls, right? I I don't no, know, that's, man. I don't. That's the brothers, but they're in Bellator, right? Right in yeah, Bellator, yeah. but both them both of them are Pitbull, right? What do you mean they both use the same nickname? Yeah, That's crazy. Am I right, Vinny? Thank really? you. Really, I'm right. Either either way, both both these guys are. Uh, yeah, they're like juggernauts the way they fight. Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. They both are sluggers. So, as a, as someone who's such a like extraordinary view on the game as a fighter, as a judge, as you know, someone who refs, what do you think makes Mike Perry success in bare knuckle after having kind of a somewhat mediocre UFC career? 
his style, bro. He's he's durable and and he comes straight. Be, uh, bare knuckle is a different sport. It's not boxing. It, it, it's not MMA. It is all gas, no break. You know what I'm saying? That is a small ring. You know, you got to be able to uh, give heavy damage and absorb heavy damage at the same time. And and his style. That's what he does. He can, he'll take one and give one right back. You know what I mean? He won't take a step back. And that's the kind of style you need to have, you know. We've seen, <clears throat> excuse me, we've seen boxers come in and try to jab the guy's face off and stuff, and that doesn't that doesn't seem to work, you know. Um, yeah, it is a, it is a high, high, you got to have that high pace, you know, style. I, I think, I think it's the best. I, I'm going to tell you, um, I think uh, Mike Perry, he, he'll do well in boxing. <laughs> We uh hell yeah. You remember Shannon Brig and I, we mm -hmm. um we they put us against each other, a uh, team captain in this um triad thing yep. with, with Triller. Okay. And they put MMA guys against boxers. <laughs> and um Mike Perry's fight is one that that won the whole thing for because it, it was like a point system. Mike Perry fought some boxer, I can't remember the name of the boxer, but the guy was tough. He well, he, he dropped Mike Mike Perry. Mike Perry came back and beat him. You know, you brought you brawl a boxer, you box a brawler. You know what I mean, and, and I think I think Perry, if he if he could do well in boxing, straight boxing, he I mean he'd have to make it dirty. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. He, he ain't gonna go out there and play a tit for tat game with you. Yeah. You know, that's, what, that's exactly what he did. He mm -hmm. won. The, he he got dropped. And a lot of times you see boxers that get dropped, and other, other boxers jump on them, and and the fight's over. Right? He he came back and, and beat that guy. It was yeah. I mean, he great. beat Luke Rockhold. Luke Rockhold's an amazing fighter. Yeah, and he and he sure you know I mean he broke Luke's tooth. And Luke, and, Luke's incredible. He's about to fight in Karate Combat this weekend, next weekend in Dubai. This weekend. That show, there's another show that's taken off, Karate yeah. Combat. That show is fun to watch. Could you ref that one too? Is that, or that's a different style? You got to study for that one or is it the same thing? Uh, well, I, I don't know. Ref, referee, judge. Uh, we'll see when it comes to a state I'm in, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Somebody. if you were to judge or ref that, would you have to go take a, like a Karate Combat class or no? You just like, got to learn their rule book or something. I don't think so. Yeah. I think it'd be yeah. a similar scoring system. If it was around back in the day, would you have fight? Would you fight in that karate comeback? I'm fighting anything back. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Whoever's you? paying the most. Yeah. Though, you know how karate comeback? Yeah, I don't know if I would. Could they be? What do they be wearing like those long pants like they used to wear in like kickboxing back <laughs> the in the PKA day? days? <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. I think it's kind of cool. You, you think know? it's cool? Yeah. I can't wait to watch Luke Rockhold be able to use kicks. I haven't seen him kick in a long time. And then fight at this. And this guy's in here every day with his shirt off, like running around with all the girls, still in top shape. So I know he's in good shape. He runs every day. Like Man, I'm excited to see him. Hey, he got a tough fight though. He's fighting Joe Schilling though, right? Oh yeah. Did that, right? I mean, it's Luke Rocco. The dude's a world champion. <laughs> hey, Luke. Hey, <laughs> Luke. Luke Rocco. He, he, he's one of us. Yeah, he's one of us. He, he got that dog in him. But I'm just saying, man, his opponent is pretty tough. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Am, 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 I, am I wrong for saying that? That's nothing wrong with saying that. Yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with saying that. But, but you yeah. haven't seen you haven't seen his opponent fight. Yeah, I have. Hey, he's good, but it's Luke Rockhold. I gotta, oh. I gotta, I gotta put out the good energy, my man. I, <laughs> why are you trying to trying to why are you trying to say like I'm saying like Luke gonna get his ass kicked or something? I just like want to clip this and send it to him. Oh, that's fucked <laughs> up. But you know what? It's, it's like I was saying earlier, right? You, know, you prepare yeah. for the worst. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every every opponent I ever fought was the, was the toughest, baddest version of of that person. Yeah. You know, that's the one that I want to beat. You know what I mean? So I always make them up to be like like a giant in my head, you know? Mm -hmm. Helps keep me on track. Keeps you like sharp and not, not, not yeah. sleeping at the wheel. One of the things we saw a bunch of people leaving comments when we were asking people in our Jackson podcast Discord, we use it every podcast now. We go in there and we put who's coming on, we let them ask questions and we delete the thread and see what anybody says is. Everybody said... You KO'd Vanderlei Silva in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, and 27. 27 seconds. Uh, you know. Okay. Let's be <laughs> hey, let's be exact. And uh one of the things was in the in the clinch, you obviously knew the way he was gonna come at you because you could see just from this fighting style, like you had a really good game plan going to that. And the uppercut, was that part of the strategy, or was that just like, hey, when he starts going wild, I'm gonna come on the inside? Like you know, it's funny, uh, my coach Burton Richardson, who's coached me for that fight in Hawaii, uh, he actually put out a video a while ago. Nice to find it, but it was us drilling that exact thing. Yeah. Um, because you know, Vandalay throws straight, straight, hook, hook. You just gotta kind of set them off. So so you know, we kind of kind of knew that, kind of doing train for it. And it's actually probably probably the only fight I've ever had where the game plan actually worked the way it was supposed to. Mm. You, you know, so it you know, I mean, obviously 
you know, just like any fight, a big, big portion of that is luck. But, uh, but yeah, we did train that. That's crazy. Have you seen the the highlight of that fight? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It's fight. the best. He fucked Van Lee up. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why? Well, why you fought him twice. I yeah. fought him four times. Four times, dude. Oh, Vanley gave me two of the worst ass whoopings I ever. T- he broke my nose. He broke it my nose. <laughs> no. For real, broke your nose. Yeah, he's no. real with a knee. Vanley broke my nose. I fought. I fought Van- the first time I fought Vanley. It was in a tournament. I had fought Chuck forty five yeah, minutes yeah. before. Then, yeah. I, then I fought yeah. Vanley, and then the second time I fought him, it was for the belt. And I was beating his ass. I remember I had dropped him and everything. Pride Vandalay was a scary man. He was a savage. And then he just ended up, he just ended up beating me. Uh, and he and he and he knocked me out. That's the time when I was hanging on the ropes. That's when he broke my nose. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the crazy thing about that knockout is maybe I didn't, maybe I wasn't unconscious. I just remember my body not working. I remember every second of it. I was, I was, I was hanging on the ropes with my arms like this. I was like, Damn, I just got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> I remember like some sweat or some blood uh, dropping from my face while I was hanging on the ropes. I'm like, am I really just hanging on these damn ropes? I couldn't move my body. It was the weirdest thing. And I didn't go unconscious or nothing. I remember every second of it. Just the brain-body connection that shut down. The craziest thing. Yeah, and then you obviously got your redemption in the UFC. Yeah, but still, even though I got my redemption, me hanging on the ropes is the most embarrassing motherfucking thing ever. <laughs> it's the most embarrassing thing ever, bro. Dang. I mean, bro, you went to battle with Vanderlei so nothing. I don't think anybody even looks at it like that. You as a fighter, man, probably. Dude, man, come on. I'm on so I, somebody teased me about that shit the other day. Shan, he, Shannon Briggs posted. I, he posted this shit the other day. I called that motherfucker a clown, and I and I and I had somebody. <laughs> I had somebody. Uh, I had somebody edit a, a, a video of him getting knocked out by Lennox Lewis, and he failed. To, <laughs> through the ring <laughs> and landed in a retirement home <laughs> in a wheelchair watching Lennox Lewis go like this. <laughs> he came back. He came back with all my worst fights. And the first one was my fat ass getting knocked out by Fedor. I was like, damn oh, this motherfucker. My. Man, I'm so fucking heated. I'm like, I wanna go. I just wanna go and fight him. I just wanna ring his doorbell and just kick his ass right there. Fuck, fuck, fuck a paid fight with I just wanna kick his ass. You, you hate him that bad, man. Oh, man, no. Nah. People actually think, like, oh, no, y'all fool. They boys. They boys. I got to find this video. No, hell no. Don't, 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 don't you dare. Don't, hey, don't, don't you dare. Hey, don't pull it up. No, no, fuck that. Dude. <laughs> don't pull it up. Don't Dude, don't do that. My fight, my fight with Fedor, is a, it it's like it's like the... It's like it's like a nightmare for me how how out of shape and how how that's the worst fight of, of my whole career. Yeah. And I was like... And he, I was like, it's the worst thing, bro. It's, it's, that, on, that's it's worse. on the internet. That's that's. I rather people watch yeah, me hanging out on the ropes. I know it's the worst. I rather people watch me hanging out on the ropes than my fat ass getting knocked out by Fedor. <laughs> Eventually, you're gonna be over it, right? Or never. No? Never. It's, it's on the never. internet. Never. It's, it's, you it's, never it's, get over your losses. Never. never. That's never. crazy. I mean, but even even with all the wins and the belts and the and the stardom and, and the success, it still irritates you, huh? Because yeah, and, and you only as good as your last fight. That's why you know mm-hmm. I haven't retired yet. I want to. Um, I want to fight again. I, th- I look, bro. I look so bad. Bellator was like, "Fuck you. We don't want you back." <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was my last fight on my contract. My manager, my manager didn't tell me if I would have known it was my last fight on my contract yeah. and uh, with the health problems I was going through, I would have pulled out. I've only pulled out of one fight in my whole career. So I would have pulled out. I would have pulled out of, out of them. If there wasn't in Japan, I would have pulled out. Yeah, I, re- I remember you, uh, you going. And I remember me and you linked up before you went. You came and got some chains, I think. And then I was like, "Good luck." But you could tell you were like a little you. You weren't. You I wasn't were healthy. Yet. I wasn't. Yeah, hey, I wasn't that healthy. Sucks. It sucks. Yeah. It, it happens. As we look at your career, how how important was Randy Couture to your success and your training coming up in the game? Oh, I mean, he was huge. You know, my the first five years of my career were with uh, were at Team Quest. You know, with Randy, mm-hmm. Randy, Robert Fallis, Matt Linlin, Chael Sonnen, Ed Herman, all that whole crew. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, and I went from from being an amateur all the way to the UFC, you know, in in that gym under underneath Randy. Yeah, wow, man, I just noticed he's the only one from his crew that I actually like. <laughs> <laughs> oh you don't like Matt Lillian? Who? Matt Lillian. I ain't really got no problem with Matt Lillian. Uncle Chell? Fuck Chell. I knew that was good. Why? <laughs> no, no, Chell, 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 we get along. We get along. But um, I'm still mad about that fight. But the, the other thing I'm kind of mad about Chell, we did a movie together. And and he had to hit me over the head with a with a <laughs> glass bottle, and you know, movie is supposed to be a fake ass. That shit seemed like it was real. <laughs> that motherfucker cut the top of my head because you know I'm bald. I had like yeah. little glass shards on the top of my head and shit. 
Was not like a fake bottle, like a prop bottle. It, yeah, it's it supposed to be like a breakaway bottle. But, okay, but I, I don't know. He hit me so I, he had some he had some animosity behind it. Throw like <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, we're supposed to be acting. <laughs> no, it was cool. He, he was he 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 said how awkward it was for us to fight in a movie after we fought in real life. I was yeah. like, yeah, it's really awkward because I <laughs> that's I, weird. Because yeah. I tell Chill, I, I still want to kick your ass, so he kind of knows that. <laughs> yeah. but he's cool. He's, yeah. fun. he's what, a funny dude. He's a good dude. He's a good he dude. What about Randy Couture? What do you think made the way he trained and the way he kind of built the team and, and the style of fighting for you guys so unique? Well, for me, you know, you know, luckily, especially at that time in my life, my, you know, I think I was maybe 21 or 20 when I started at Team Quest. And uh, you know, watch watching Randy and, and his level of uh the way the way he treated you know his his diet his workout routine his his training bro that guy was never not in top top shape you know and that's why he was winning titles and you know in, in well into his forties Jesus you know um, so I mean that made a that made a huge difference in 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 me to see what it, what it takes to to be, to be a champion and to you know mm -hmm. um, to compete at the highest level at least and. Uh, you know, Randy, Randy helped me in a, in a lot of ways. Cause, cause at, at that time, bro, I was, uh, I was lost youth, you know what I mean? So that, so to see some, to see another man that actually had structure and regiment and was, was reaping the benefits of, of his hard work. There was nobody else like that in my life at that, at that time. So, you know, um, and you know, the, 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 in, the positive influence, you know, was huge. If it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What, what is the Holocaust of juice is that? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That was I'm a 30 sorry. second gold. No, he's in the middle of a heart. Good. Speech. Whatever it is. Yeah, what's good. going on over there? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was, it, was it loud or something? <laughs> loud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It was like Nemo the fish. Yeah. Cut that shit out. Don't cut any of that out. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, so yeah, I mean, but, but, you know, Far aside from from any of the techniques, yeah. just the, just the way that Randy conducted himself and, and the way that he trained, and then him being there and help guide and push me, I, I think is is what what you know one of the for sure one of the reasons I got to where I where I got. There's a video on YouTube of uh, Uncle Chael saying that he he really always like like to check in on you, and you were one of his favorites. You were his partner in training, and that he you asked him to take you pro or to take you through the amateur ranks or something like that. Is that true? Chael, yeah. Yeah, Chael, Chael was there for me since the since the very beginning, and we we still stay in touch. He'll shoot me texts, "What up, man? How you doing?" You know, so so we still talk, and uh, yeah, a lot a lot of good rounds with that guy, man. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good rounds early in my career. So. Is Chael is he a good guy? He's a great guy. He seems he seems like he, a cool guy. He's a. Why do you laugh when you say he's a great guy? He. Cause he's a funny dude. He talks he, a lot of shit. That's why. That's why. I, that's what I, I mean, yeah. I remember back in the day, we used to, you know, after we practice, and then after practice, him and I would sit there. And we would we would just re rehearse our post fight speech. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's I mean, he's like the you know, he's like Ted DiBiase or something. Mm -hmm. You know, the million dollar man. Yeah. Sometimes when you hear him going off, it just cracks me up. I always said he should have been a pro wrestler, bro. He's oh, really good. He's very really, good. At, very, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. He's really good at promos and talking on, talking on the mic. The show is very. That's a huge. That's a huge part of our sport. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. So, and he nailed that part. Yeah, he's a big believer and a big proponent of you got to sell the fight. And he's always when a fight gets announced, he's always breaking down the way he thinks the fight's going to go based off who's promoting and who if it's a good matchup because who's going to help sell the fight. Like he's so into that. Like he's so into the the business side of fighting. Well, you know, and and some fighters that they, they they just want to think of themselves as athletes. But listen, you are fifty percent athlete, fifty percent entertainer in this game. You exactly, know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta you gotta know that. You gotta yes, come find that. You have to perform. You have to win. You have to get your hand raised. But but up up until that fight, you gotta put asses in seats. Did Did you know when did he fight Vanderlei? Yeah. Or did you know during that time when <laughs> uh, he wasn't allowed to go to Brazil? Oh, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, it would have been a bad idea. Wait, yeah. why would that have been a bad idea? Oh, would you didn't kill his ass. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Chael. <laughs> you didn't hear the shit he was saying? No. About the the Noguera brothers trying <laughs> wait, to feed what he carrots said? to the bus. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? The yeah. Noguera bro ninja? No, no, the Noguera brothers, the oh, twins. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you say ninja? <laughs> Who are you talking about? We talking about the Noguera brothers. Did yeah. he call out ninja though? I don't remember. I don't know about that. I just remember the shit he was saying about the Brazilians. What was he saying? 
<laughs> I'm trying to remember what he was saying about Vanderlei, but it was man, wait, it was bad. Jill Sutton, Jill Jill Sutton was talking loud about Vanderlei Silva. He was oh. talking so bad that that um he if he would have went to Brazil, they would have killed him. That's how bad it was. <laughs> no. no, 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 yeah. real talk. Yeah. Really, for sure, yeah. for sure. Well, why, how the Brazilian the fans hate him. I don't think he's vacationing to Brazil ever. The whole country Let's put hates it that him. Way. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how big MMA is in Brazil? Yeah, of course. So they all they all they're crazy fans. Down they're crazy there fans. Too. It was on site for him if you went to Brazil, a hundred percent. He he heard he said he said that he he was telling that one time he saw <laughs> the Nagara brothers trying to feed a bus a carrot. <laughs> he thought they thought they thought it was a horse. <laughs> That's what he said. You didn't hear this shit. Can we Facetime Uncle Jim? Man, you gotta. Hey, you gotta. Is look, this true? It's true. You gotta can look at those. Can you? Is this true? Yeah, that's true. It's true. Oh, yeah. I can see why they would want to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Was, hey, I'm not going to lie. It was funny, though. What about, what about, didn't he say something crazy about Tito Ortiz's wife? Oh, yeah. Wasn't he that did. like oh, a crazy, say, wasn't that something. like a crazy, crazy? Oh, I ain't getting into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, why do you, why, why you keep trying to clown, why you keep Bro. trying to clown Tito like that? I'm not that? clowning Tito. I love no, Tito Ortiz. No, 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 no. Why you bringing that up about something like that, though? Tito comes to all my family's charity events. Tito was, when he was the mayor of HB, we, we all supported him. <laughs> When he came here, he was one of our first guests. I think Tito Ortiz is a great. So why guy. you ask him? So why you ask him about what he said about Tito's wife? His that's ex-wife. A t- that's a touchy subject for Tito. No, I don't know. I'm saying didn't Uncle Chael say something bad? There's yeah. like this whole video about he what, did say something uh, bad. But why are you bringing that up though? I'm not bringing it up. I'm asking. He seems to have a lot of insight. This guy's an MMA. Legend. I don't know nothing. Bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he did it. It was all good. Then they're all friends. Well, I don't know if he, I don't know if Tito will ever be friends with him. I do what he said about Tito's ex-wife. Yeah. Uncle Chael? Yeah, I don't, yeah, think, they I don't think they're friends. No, they're friends. not at all. Meh, maybe. I got to go look after this. No, nah, I got to I gotta call Tito up and tell him to watch this episode research. and see that you trying, what you're trying to do. I would never. <laughs> hey, first of all, I'm the biggest fan of Tito. And, and if you do that, then I'm going to have to call Tito and tell him what you said to Tank. Exactly. I didn't right. say nothing yeah, to Tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> move on. Yeah, let's move on. Wait, two could play that game. Two could tango. So one thing I want to talk to you about is uh, in terms of MMA, a lot of people like to do this list, this Mount Rushmore list. And one thing that I, we were talking internally uh, with like our whole staff and all of our fight club, and we had a bunch of people here yesterday. It seems like Randy Couture always gets left off this mountain of like a pioneer slash like greatest ever to do it. Is there a reason why you think he gets left out of the conversation a lot when he did so much for so long in the UFC? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great question. You know what I mean? I think maybe he could have caused more of a scene. <laughs> like be more controversial? Yeah, been more controversial, been a, been a little more more outspoken. He was just such a a, a competitor. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And and it's funny because every time I see somebody talk about fighting Randy Couture, they always go, yeah, you know, I just I was off that day. I wasn't, I don't know, you know, he's good, but I, I wasn't, my, my game wasn't working out and I didn't feel right, you know, and it's like every single guy that fights him says that same thing, you know, you're like, well, maybe there's something, maybe there's something to that, you know? I mean, he did, he did so much for the sport and he was so huge. He was so huge at the time, you know, mm-hmm. and, de- and definitely for me, I mean, I remember, <clears throat> I remember the first day I walked into Team Quest and, Randy Couture, it was, a, it was, at that time, it was a, a, an old auto body shop, you know, Matt Lindland's USA Auto Wholesale. They were fixing the cars in the back, and they just had, like, some mats on And I walked back there, and, and Matt Lindland and Randy Couture were kicking the shit out of each other in the back, you know? And I was like, oh, my God, it's the champ, you know? That's where, that's, a, that's you know. That's great. So you're telling me Matt Lindland was a mechanic? No, Matt Lindland <laughs> had a, had a used, used car shop. But that that explains everything. Why they he smells like that? Car. He smells like a mechanic, bro. He, he don't smell great. He don't. He, he, don't smell great. he smells like a mechanic. That that makes sense. <laughs> what do you mean he don't smell great? Matt, Matt Lindland doesn't smell good. What do you care Listen, about? Listen, I love smells? Matt Lindlin, but I can remember sometimes he did not smell the best. Sometimes, well, every time I met that, mother, you know, I used to train up there with Dan Henderson sometimes, and Matt Lindlin was there mm-hmm. in Temecula. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. you training there at that time? Dan would come up. He'd come up to to Oregon. Sometimes oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Beat me up. Bro, yeah. I trained with Matt Lynn. I was like, I dreaded it. Then I had to fight the motherfucker. <laughs> I was like, wow. That bad that you remember it. Bro, I would never forget that smell. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was, I yeah. thought it was, I thought it was part yeah. of his, I thought it was part of his strategy when he fights to, I think know, it is. It is. I don't yeah. think he showers, but you know, when he cuts the weight and everything. For like two months? <laughs> <laughs> at least the whole weight cut. I'm gonna tell you, he smelled like two weeks. Two weeks, at least. Yeah. At least. Yeah, that's a long. That's, I, a, that's a strategy, you know. That's a that's a that's a strategy. I, I remember one time I fought one guy in K1, 
and he smelled like that. But he actually he was worse than Matt Lennon because I had to shower two times to get that guy smell off me. <sighs> That's terrible. That, that should be. I mean, that should be. Uh... A, a illegal. Rule. It should be illegal. How about you? How about that's a yeah. health issue? You yeah, know? like yeah. For you, you to remember this many years later, yeah, it it must staff be staff and all sorts of stuff. Like yeah. you had to shower before your fight. That should <laughs> be a rule. That should be a rule. I like that. Yeah. Um, the attitude and kind of you as a person now we see is very humble, very respectful, and you kind of are setting the tone for like an athlete and a, a business owner and someone who's very successful outside of the cage. Before this turn, you know, we see videos of you like you know, drunk at a slot machine the night before your fight, <laughs> hammered, and then you go in and you win the fight the next day. Like, it seems like you were just living a lawless life at the same time, just brawling and doing whatever you want. Is there any truth to that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's pretty... He remembers, man. That's yeah. pretty much... Uh, yeah. I was a little wild. A little wild. Have you ever fought drunk? I fought hungover. Oh, my God. <laughs> in the UFC? Yeah, you know. Uh, oh, my God. I've definitely fought hungover. But actually, fresh drunk? No, no. Maybe there was maybe there was some sort of blood content left, but yeah. And you trained drunk. You've drank and trained before. Oh yeah. I don't see how you can do it, man. <laughs> it used to work for me, you know. When people go, you know, Chris, what if you know how far could you have made it? You know, da da da. If you wouldn't have been doing this and that, and I don't know. You know what I mean? I'll never know. So it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. This is. This is what happened, you know. This is what I went through. Uh, you know, I had some highs. I had a lot of fucking lows, that's for sure. You know, uh, because of that lifestyle, um, it definitely brought me a lot more pain than it did pleasure. But you know, it, you know, in in the end, fast forward to where I'm at right now. You know, uh, um, you know, recovery is something that I'm uh, I'm very active in. You know, I, I I speak a lot about it, I, and I work with a lot of people in San Diego. You know. And, and I think uh, not just that, but also from a coaching standpoint, you know, you know, you got these, all, every, every 20 year old that comes in my gym, I, I say, you know, listen, I don't know it now. There's a reason you're here. You know, your average person, man, they, you know, regular, if you had a good upbringing, you're probably going to college. And I would say, I'm going to be an ultimate fighter. Like, that's what I want to do. You know, we all, we all got, we all got shit and we all deal with it one way or another, you know, and I think that, uh, my gym, the training center, I mean, that's half That's half the battle is, uh, uh, you know, trying to, you know, it's like therapy, you know, helping people helping people do their shit, you know. And uh, I went through a lot of it. And luckily, I, I think for the most part, you know, came out came out on the other side, not not completely ruined. So yeah. you don't drink anymore now? No, no, I haven't drank for a long time. So it was a problem, you were saying? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it was a problem. And now, and now he's, he's a good good light and a good beam for people to look at and a kind of good example. Well, I'm glad you addressed it um, sooner because we just talked to Tank yesterday and he said he drank himself to death. He he said he died. Yeah. So, and and yeah. you don't, you, when you're doing it, like you don't, you don't think, you don't think about it because um, after, after my fight with Ricardo Arona, I think I was turning into an alcoholic because I've never, I've never craved, I never craved alcohol before until after that I, I started craving like, Oh, I want a, I want a uh, vodka cranberry, and I started going out and drinking more and more because yeah. I was a bouncer at this Vietnamese bar before. And I, I used to go back there and start drinking. And my dad was an alcoholic when I was a kid, and I was like, man, you know, I've I've been drinking since I was eight years old, so I never I never craved it. Then then hearing your stories and tank story, I'm like, man, I'm glad I kind of like put that mm -hmm. shit to the side. And you still young, forty, and still mm -hmm. young. And you you stopped that shit a couple years ago. Yeah, I've been sober now five and a half years. Wow, yeah. So. yeah. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I tried to stop like ten years ago, but it yeah. took you know it took a little bit. It took a, it took a little bit of work, but luckily I'm five and a half years, you know, hundred percent sobriety right now. That's good, man. In a in a respectful way for the people watching this, that kind of battle with their own things. What do you think is one of the biggest things someone can do if they're trying to put themselves back on track and they just don't have the the ability to do that? They don't have anyone to reach out. What is something they could do if they were listening to you right now? Uh, well, yeah, but listen, if, 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 if drugs and alcohol is, is a major problem, like there's nothing you can do. You can't do it on your own. You're going, you're going to need help. And, uh, you know, the nice thing about, you know, in, in San, San Diego, we have a huge recovery community and, and, and I'm sure it's probably the same up here. There, I'm guarantee you, you know, several people that are sober, you know, we all, we all mm -hmm. know people that have struggled with it. If you struggle, 
reach out to one of these people that 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 uh, that used to and have been sober for a while because I guarantee you they they there's there, there's some stuff we do you know there's some there's some organizations you can get with you know and they'll point you in the right direction and uh, get you going with that you yeah. know and and for sure you know for for all the listeners um, anybody that that that's struggling and wants to you know uh, direct message me. You know, I will give you the uh, the best the best help and information I can. You know, if you're if you're in San Diego, I'll I'll take you to meet with some of my boys. You know, whatever I can do. Um, if not on the internet, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely try to point you in the right direction. So please reach out. Yeah. What's your Instagram? Uh, Chris Lieben MMA. Yeah, su- super super easy to talk to. Even when I was messaging him, come on the show, like super super easy to talk to. He him. didn't what hound I- you. He didn't, he didn't bug you and shit. No. <laughs> He be bugging people, bro. A little bit. Wait, wait, you don't want no guests? Oh yeah, we don't want guests. I, I'm not saying that. Hey, is that that's the hardest part about having a show, bro? Huh? You have no lining, clue. Lining, you lining have no guests clue. up till it's, four in the morning every night. The entire world of MMA. I'm buying flights from Brazil. I'm buying flights from the UK. Boxers, fighters, WWE. Now we're doing action sports. I mean, yeah. me and Rampage are are the main show which is mm-hmm. Jackson podcast. Mm-hmm. And then we have these like smaller shows as a way to just try to build our culture and community a little bit. We have one with Twitch. He's a motocross, you know, freestyle legend. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan Sheckler and P-Rod are legends. Yeah. And then Luke Rockhold and TJ are like our co-co-host when we do the fight. You know, I'm not going to say anything bad, but like when we when we are like reviewing a fight, sometimes Rampage doesn't watch the fight. So when so when we so when we come in here to like you know do a full analysis of the fight, Rampage is like, when was this fight? And they're like, oh, that fight was last night, and that's why we're all here today. So it's good. It's good that we have TJ and Luke here. But besides that, yeah, it's 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 a full time job. Thank yeah. the Lord, I have a good team. I have Vinny and Loco and my whole squad. Bro, here. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't go and ask people to come on the show. I've asked a few people and stuff like that, and a lot of times they just you know. You know, I consider them like friends, buddies, or whatever. And David's like cold shoulder and leave me on red. Yeah, like, fuck this. You know, it's, fuck it's, this part of the job. There, there's there's a job for everybody out there. You know what I mean? Just yeah. dep- depends on your personality and stuff. Like, yeah, I think it would be hard for me too. Yeah, yeah. but the only reason why I said that because B- Boss Rudin straight up said like he was finna block Bear ass. Bear be like, like Boss and <laughs> Hoist Gracie. I, I did not stop texting them or calling them till they responded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like Hoist Gracie was asleep in Brazil, and I would call him and say, "Hey, what's up? Good morning." He said, two in the morning." Thing like Hoist Gracie ain't having it. Yeah. And then uh, boss, but they were super respectful and kind, and yeah, they both came guy. on, and we flew them nice. out. The thing with me is that I'm like, I don't want him to have to ever do it because he's a legend. He shouldn't have to, and he and I don't want him to like uh, like I'm scheduling people, so I'm just on it all day, and then That's I just it. say, I'm, yeah. Like, yeah, we need it. We're trying to put together the best show. We're not trying to do it for any other reason. Like, we, I turned off the AdSense on the account. We don't even run ads on our YouTube. It's strictly just for us to have good combos with legends like yourself. There you go. That's you, awesome. As we get ready to wrap this thing up, one of the things is you retired after that uh, the Uriah Hall fight. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is there anything that you feel or you regret, like a fight you didn't take or, or something you could have trained harder for? I know it's probably easier now that you're a little bit more focused and, and you have your training center and everything else going on yeah man like i said you know you know the last few fights in my uh ufc career were fucking terrible terrible that last uriah hall fight was uh i mean it was really horrible for me because you know and i've talked about this before uh for for being a guy that's never tapped out that you know the the fights that would fight to the death i pride myself on that shit i always did i just didn't answer the bell for that last round like, you know, I feel like I did enough, but I had so much, you know, with the, the, the drugs and alcohol and everything that was going on with me outside of the cage, um, you know, and that haunted me, it haunted me for a while. It wasn't until, uh, you know, then, uh, you know, kind of the short version of the story. Um, then, then all of a sudden I, I got sober and, uh, I started kicking the shit out of a lot of the 20 year olds in the gym again. And I started getting a fire for training it again. You know, and then uh, it's about the time uh, Bare Knuckle called me, you know, and and my Bare Knuckle career is 100% sober, you know, all those fights. Wow, you that's know, good. I fought all those fights 100% sober, and, and I had three first-round knockouts. I had one loss against a guy named Dakota Cochran, and, and that, that, for me, is the most rewarding fight that of, of probably of my life uh, because there's a lot of things, you know, I won't get into, you know, Going into the fight, this, this, that, da, da, da. Um, but I, I will tell you, that motherfucker hit harder than anybody I've ever fought in my life. I think he broke my orbital, like, first or second punch of the fight, right? Wow. First round, you know, and I had, 
You know, that's the one where Joe Rogan's talking about the cut. There was like 30 some stitches here, 20 here. They had to stitch my nose back on. Like my face was hamburger. But but we fought five rounds. Wow. We fought five rounds. I fought like that and I and I finished finished that fight. You know, the judges gave it to him, you know. <laughs> Damn them judges always. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he he definitely I I definitely looked worse for the wear. That's for sure. Yeah. But uh, but you know it, it let me know that that that's who I am. That's the kind of fighter that I am. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the guy that quit on the stool his last UFC fight. That was all that other shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once I took that out, I I went back and I was able to can never right or wrong, of course, you know. But uh, I was able to prove to myself. You know, so that that that's why that's probably the most rewarding fight in my career. I was thinking about this. Um, I think this 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 morning, or yeah, I was thinking about this this morning. You know how we always think about time machines. Yeah. Yeah. You thought you you have that thought. I wish there was a time machine. I can go back. I'd be of, a time tourist. Bro. Yeah. I, I. You know, I'm black. I can't go back too far in time. <laughs> <laughs> but I go. I tell you. I tell you where I go back. I I will go back. I will go back in, in time. Right before my Shogun fight in my in my career in my life, that's that's where I, that's as far as back I would go. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, where 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 in your career would you go, or in your life, if you if there was a time machine? You know, this trajectory that I'm on right now, uh, my life has improved so much, and it's changed so much, and it's been through so many different seasons. And uh, just with with all the, all the shit I have going on, you know, being able to to help people, you know, my gym, co coaching, refing, you know, my my family, everything that I'm doing, I'm I'm I would go in the future, bro. I want to see where I want to see if I stay on this trajectory, where I'm going to be in another five years, where I'm going to be in another fucking ten years, you know, because everything is just getting getting better and better, you know. Uh, you can't you can't fix shit, bro. You know, I think I think it'd be like one of those things where if you went back, then something else would fucked up would happen. Yeah, you know, fuck you know, yeah. I know. You know, I think about you know, that. You know, what I would have less like, kids and a whole lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. So fuck yeah. So it's just that that's that is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I feel I feel your thought about, it. but me, I was thinking about some some people I did business with, managers I fucking would never hire. And I, I would have just punched him right in the head. <laughs> yeah, like, first time I saw him. <laughs> like, Fuck you. I know what you about to do to me. Fuck you. What's that for? <laughs> well, that's that's what's up though. You go to the future. That's yeah, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. I never thought about that. I never thought about going to the future. Yeah, I think it depends. I think his outlook on life right now is very uh uh I don't want to say positive because everybody's outlook is always positive. It's very, you know, let's not worry about what happened and let's build. And I'm let's, excited to yeah. see where I'm going. Yeah, it's cool. Right? And, I, and some of that stuff in the past, man, I I want to leave it. I want to leave it back there. <laughs> yeah, not I ain't every, trying to go back and fix it. Fuck it. Yeah. I'm leave that back there. Not That's everything needs to be un unpacked. Like even for me, there and then anybody, whether it's a small or bad mishap in your life, it, it is always there to remind you. Right? It gets put there. I think in a position to remind you. So like when you're in that position of success, you don't fall off again. I in, think so. In, I, a, I, in a bigger I think position so. of success. Yeah. Speaking of success, let's talk about real quick as we wrap this thing up, your gym, San Diego, what's going on with this? What do you got going on with your training center, um, the business as a whole? So so we're, we're killing it. We're, we're right in Pacific Beach in San Diego. You know, obviously, you know, if you're on vacation or you live down there, please, please stop in. I got uh, uh, Barrett Yoshida is, mm -hmm. is my jiu-jitsu coach, um, ADCC Hall of Famer. So we have an incredible jiu-jitsu program. Um, then I, I do the striking side, you know? So if you want to learn boxing, kickboxing, you're probably going to work with me. If you're doing jujitsu, you're going to work with, work with Barrett. We have a fight team, you know? We got like 260 members right now and we're growing strong. What's yeah. the name of your gym? The training center. The training, training center. center. Yeah. Can Barrett come down there and spar with you one Stop. day? Stop. Any day. I would love to come learn, Any not spar. Day. No, I want, Why I want, do you want to put me in the fire so bad? Because you think you rock it by board now. I, I played the soundtrack one time and he won't <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> with his shirt off. He got the listen. He got the boxer cup on. Oh, you know, you know the thing the boxers yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah, that's up here. <laughs> the, what you call all, those things? All the way up to his nipples. <laughs> <laughs> it protects my ribs. I have a cracked rib, and I, and I have a um, a sprainous orbit, or, orbital rollus, the the little cord. They said it might be disconnected. They don't know. Did but, your, uh, did your, did your uh, and the nose? Don't forget yeah, about the nose. Nose is broken. Did, did <laughs> I got your, two weeks <laughs> off. Did your gynecologist clear you to spar and stuff though? 
my gynecologist. I don't know if I saw that guy. Did I see him? <laughs> Did I see him or something? The yeah. thing where they clean you, your whole thing Yeah, the last that. time you saw me, you you was um you wasn't feeling well. You, you said you had to go see your gynecologist. Yeah, so you sit on this table, they put like this, they like it, it like sucks all the junk out of your or, or your organs, your liver. You should do it. It's like Wait, a, what? Yeah, it's like once a year. You see, your, a, you see your gynecologist? It's a colonic or something. I don't know what it's called. It's like a colonic or something. They said you got to do it if you're like really sick. So I got really sick. I did it and it like cleanses your whole body. Man, I tried that one time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you tried You tried that? Like, fuck, yeah. never again. Never again. Me too. <laughs> never again. I gained weight my, from it. My chick at the time bought me three because they said it takes three of them to like mm-hmm. really like they have They sell success. you on the packages like a timeshare. Right. Yeah. I got it. I got it. And then I was like, nope. Fuck <laughs> It's supposed to be good to keep you from getting I'm, colon cancer. I'm out of here. Yeah. Hey, you know Oh, what? it's not a yeah, gynecologist. It's, thank you. It's a colonic. A gynecologist. Yeah, pers- what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, thank, you. thank you. What is wrong with you? You're going to make me sound stupid on camera? You think I would do that <laughs> I to you? I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, I'm, like, I'm, like, like I'm like, I'm like, wait, they, is they that? They set you on the- <laughs> I'm like, wait, why is it? Why are you laughing? Uh, thank the Lord I got a good team. You gonna set Man, me up like how that? you guys going to rat me out over there? Hey, you going to set me up like that? <laughs> Damn it. Man, hey, every time every time I come, you saw you saw him when I came in here, he'd make fun of my outfits and stuff oh, like that. What, how did I make fun of him? I said every he time amazing, I come here. right? If I give <laughs> him a compliment. You said you're ready for the club. Listen, he's if been I, sarcastic. here's the problem with Rampage. Rampage is a superstar. We know that. But he's been my yeah, friend whatever. for 10 years, so I don't look at him as anything but my friend. So when he walks in here and everybody's on him, oh, you look so good, you look so good. I'm like, yo, you look like you're ready for the club. Just an easy, nice compliment. I'm not going to be over here like, <laughs> like on him. And then he gets mad as if like, like, do you want a better compliment? I'm 45 years old. What the fuck I look, what do I look like dressing up like I'm going to a club? That's that's not a compliment. That's that's a, you know. You didn't I'm 45 take this girl years old. to go get enchiladas and chimichangas last Friday at the at the Mexican spot you always go to, Los Logos? That's a restaurant. Yeah, and you was there Lagos. at the three in the morning with Marab. Marab's a UFC fighter. You, Marab, rainbow margaritas and enchiladas and I was, chimichangas. I was eating. <laughs> what do you mean? You had like four burritos. Hey, hey, real talk. I I met Marab there, right? They was carrying him. <laughs> I'm not lying. The, it's no, a true story. Real. He was at that restaurant at the after party. Mm-hmm. I thought that nigga was Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. He's from Georgia. <laughs> I had no idea. I thought that motherfucker was Mexican. Because he was wearing the, the sombrero thing? What is Everything. that called? What's the sombrero called? What's that called? Sombrero? No, no, no. The thing that goes over you. It looks like this, but it's like a thing. Got the hole right here. Yeah, the poncho. The poncho. The poncho. He's wearing a poncho. Not like the rain one, like a real Mexican traditional one. Man, for real though. I I, I feel stupid when when we had him here and he I was gonna start speaking my Spanish to him and everything. (laughs) At one point I'm like, why does he keep saying like Como estas and stuff. I'm like, I'm looking at Rampage, like, bro, the guy's not Mexican. The guy's from Georgia. (laughs) Yeah, you listen. So so we're we're ready to wrap this up. So what uh what's next for you? Tell 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 us, man. You know, just continuing on track, like I was saying. You know, trying to uh, you know, build build the gym, keep keep training people, refereeing, judging, you know, and uh, staying sober and trying to help other people with that. That's it. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Super admirable about how you're so open to helping other people. I think one thing we need to do as a society is stop being so judgmental. And there's a lot of people that need help. They just don't know who to go to. So. That, no joking aside, is super respectful and probably one of your biggest accomplishments in your career. Because as someone at your stature to do that, I have a lot of friends that are sober now and they all say the same thing. They just need someone to get them on track. So that's awesome. Um, last thing I want to say, is it true that you're coming back to fight? I heard that you were going to do a boxing fight. Yeah, we and, heard whispers. Yeah, we heard what? whispers that you were coming back to do a boxing fight. And that you, you, you had me a few, up. No, 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 no. We heard I, whispers, bro. I heard you were going to come back to do a boxing fight. I don't want to say the guy, but I heard I heard the name. It's a pretty legendary name. So no, I don't, I don't, no, no. Are you sure? Is, that you just, is you, false. You can't tell us. This, 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 you can't talk about uh, it. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. That's false. No. Did they offer you the contract already and you turned it down or you just are not even entertaining them? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't heard nothing. You guys know more than I do, apparently. <laughs> you so. still got a manager? You still got a manager? No. You, so you just like, no. I'm going to do it myself. That's what that, yeah. com- yeah. that's what yeah. that comment means. That doesn't yeah. mean he's not you doing can't, it. You know, you, the, th- the thing is, I, I, you know, I'm wearing a different hat nowadays. You know, I'm a referee, a judge, you know, coach. You can't, can't be a fighter too. All right. All right. You, you know what I mean? I, so. I, I understand. I, I'm almost in the same shoes as you. Say this, this, this motherfucker right now that everybody's gunning for What's his name? Jake Paul. He- How much money are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's just end it with that. As we wrap this up, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul, who is going to win that? 
Oh, I don't I don't want to say I don't want to say anything, but you know, listen, because obviously we all love Mike Tyson. He's old though, man. Jake, Jake, Jake can hit. Jake can hit. You know, I, I think that fight can play out a couple different ways, but but I think the longer it goes, I think I think I think Jake might be able to catch him. We'll see. Wow. Yeah, because I heard Jake got really good cardio and I'm I'm um, I mean, he's not a terrible boxer. I've watched all I've watched all his fights. He's mm-hmm. not a great boxer. He's nowhere yeah. near where Mike Tyson was. You know, if it was a sixteen year old Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul now, yeah. I would I would put every penny on that Mike Tyson. But of course. But age age is a motherfucker, dude. <laughs> Excuse so, me. You know, so just, I agree with him. 100%. Yeah, yeah. And actually, this is a great insight. So, real quick before we let you go, last time I'll say that. But I just want to know how if you were in Jake's camp, how would you Coach him and train him to beat Mike Tyson. Why would you? Why would you even? I just want to know what people think he needs to do to beat a guy like Mike Tyson. I Mike Tyson's my idol. I wear a Mike Tyson t shirt every day. Don't come at me like that. You do that one more time. I'm a, I'm a spar you today. All right. I right, no, I don't want to do that. But don't do that. I mean, he's got to be ready. He's got to, you know, he probably can't keep him at range, so he's probably gonna have to hang on him when he gets inside. Tie him up, slow it down. Can't let can't let Tyson stay in close, right? Mm. You know, pulling his head, make it make it dirty at least at first. Try to tire him out before you even start boxing. I wouldn't start boxing for the first first few rounds. Really? Oh, why is that? Tyson's still dangerous, bro. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still he's he's still Mike Tyson. You know? Wow, that's great. That's exactly what Sugar Shane Mosley said. First round, don't box him. Push him around. Try to move and see how heavy he is, right? Like something like that, or correct me if I'm wrong. That way, yeah. I actually have the right clip. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. I that's, can't remember. I mean, that. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of craziness going on in the combat sports world right now. There, there is. There, it's a, it's a, it's a cool time, actually. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like we got our haters. You know, we got our purists. And oh, stuff, wait, oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. These guys are selling tickets, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they're bringing fresh eyeballs, and I love it. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of Jake Paul. You know, I, I like him. I don't dislike him. But yeah. I, I can say that he got me back into boxing. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't really watching boxing. And then. you actually enjoy it now. Yeah, I enjoy it. I'm talking about he got me back into watching it, not You're, doing it. Yeah. Because I enjoy it. You know, Jake Paul got me back into watching yeah, yeah, boxing. Yeah. But I'm saying you enjoy training again, which is cool. I see yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. one's even here when you're training. You're doing it because you want to. Again. Yeah, I got to go train soon. We get. Soon we're done here. As soon we get done here. I Man. love it. Man, it's unreal. It's, it's part. It's part of my life now. Back training all the time. I, I stopped training for, for for like what since the Fedor fight. I wasn't doing shit. Now you, you got to look fire out. again. Yeah. a little bit. That's yeah. good. You look super yeah. healthy and you, and, you and, look good. And Thank you, brother. Sets precedent. Cool, dude. I I appreciate you making the drive up here. I'm sorry, Rampage didn't tell you that the fairgrounds was across street from the <laughs> podcast studio. He <laughs> drove three hours here, three hours back, three hours here, three hours back. And it's Friday now, too. Yeah. No, so, we, yeah. we, we'll get him out of here right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, want to. Yeah, yeah. um, thank you for coming on. MMA oh. icon, MMA legend. Everybody knows. Make sure you go check right him out in, if you're in San Diego. Better to GDO, Rampage Jackson, Jackson Podcast. All right.